Welcome to Allen Berry Reports TV. I'm your host, Allen Berry Labucan from AllenBerryReports.com. Uh, today we have a new installment of our In the News show. This is a program where we talk about uh, resource companies and uh, discuss some of their recent developments. And um, on today's show, we have three companies to talk about. One of those companies is focused on uh, gold and silver. Another is a purely gold play. And then the other is a uh, purely silver play. So we got a really nice mix and uh, with gold and silver there. Um, before getting uh, our before we do the in the news part of the show, we always like to open with a uh, commentary. Uh, in today's commentary, we're going to talk about some of the reasons that we uh, prefer gold, um, resource stocks over commodities. Uh, even though we have bullish outlooks on commodities, we th still feel that uh, um, resource stocks will outperform, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, in the opening commentary. Um, before getting started, <coughs> excuse me. We always like to open with um, our thank you messages uh, to those that are really important in us being able to bring these shows to you. Uh, first of all, we use YouTube.com as our primary website to uh, produce and broadcast these shows so you can watch them at your leisure. They have a great website for anybody that's interested in doing online shows and we highly recommend them. Uh, also, if you're watching the show on our website at AllenBerryReports.com, You'll notice to the left and right of me that we have banner sponsors. Those banner sponsors are really important in us being able to bring these shows to you. Um, we have uh, the banners directly, their banners are directly linked to their company's websites. And so it's an easy way for you to um, uh, just click on the banners. It'll take you to their websites and uh, you can find plenty of information about the company's projects, their people involved, their news and uh, we invite you to uh, check out our sponsors and I uh, think you'll find some uh, good information in there. Uh, also to you the viewers, uh, you uh, give us an audience to talk to about uh, commodities, resource stocks, the stock markets and other topics and uh, we really appreciate you uh, tuning in to watch and so thank you very much. Alright, so um, in the opening commentary today um, wanted to start out uh, with the uh, talking about um, uh, some of the uh, reasons that we see resource stocks as the play uh, in the commodities and resource stock space. Uh, one of the key reasons is that they that we feel they are the best play is that we see that uh, many need to be re many of the high quality resource companies that we follow that have uh, important discoveries that they're either just making or are advancing towards uh, economic evaluation or potentially development as well. Um, we feel that uh, they, they, they've had the strong moves in the commodities that those companies have in their deposits, uh, but uh, the, um, uh, that the uh, resource stocks have n are not clearly reflecting or accurately ref reflecting uh, the value and pr appreciation uh, that has happened because the commodities that they have have gone up so much and so uh, we think that there's a trend towards uh, repricing uh, also the, uh, the the there's a lot of um, mergers and acquisitions and any companies with high quality projects are, are uh, potential targets for takeouts and so um, you know that will also help them get repriced uh, and uh, so that's one of the key reasons the second reason is um, we see uh, higher prices for commodities coming, coming uh, based on long-term trends in supply and demand and uh, that's one key reason we see that uh, over the past couple decades not enough investment in exploration for new discoveries nor development of new mines uh, or in the case of oil new uh, oil production and um, this has um, seriously 
weak in the supply chain. Then you've got demand from emerging and developed economies. These emerging economies are rapidly growing. Uh, their middle classes are growing. They're consuming a lot more commodities uh, on a daily basis. And this added pressure on the supply chain uh, is ultimately why we've seen a 10-year uh, bull market for several commodities and expect that commodity bull to keep on running into the future. Um, and so another uh, uh, key uh, reason uh, is, is uh, also that uh, the poor, the U.S. Um, commodities are priced in U.S. dollars and traded in U.S. dollars, and so they tend to move contrary to what's happening with the U.S. dollar. And the fundamentals of the U.S. dollar are poor, uh, with uh, rapidly growing debt and deficits, plus rapidly growing printing of uh, U.S. dollars, and uh, we think that there's ample supply of debt and uh, U.S. dollars sloshing around yet. Uh, so, uh, demand is uh, suspect and so uh, we think that the uh, the, the long-term bear market for the US dollar will continue and uh, we see lower prices for the US dollar which will push up another uh, push on the price of uh, commodities and so uh, those are some of the key reasons that we think that um, uh, resource stocks are the best play um, we think that these trends are well developed and continuing uh, we look for pullbacks. The key, the best way to play these trends is we are look. We, we think that uh, investors that look for uh, pullbacks in commodity prices that also uh, take resource stocks down with them uh, is the best place to be looking for buying and uh, and then selling into the rallies to raise cash for the next pullback. And so we think that uh, pullbacks in a long-term bull market are very healthy. They're a place to find bargains. The fundamentals of what is driving the bull markets uh, for commodities is still very strong. And so we think that a uh, great way to play that again is to uh, buy the dips on uh, commodity or resource stocks when commodity prices pull, push them downward uh, and, uh, and look to be trimming and taking some profits on the uh, upswings uh, to prepare for the next pullbacks and so uh, that's where we see things going forward um, that's a wrap on our opening commentary uh, we're now going to move into our um, uh, the first company we're going to talk about today and that first company is oh sorry the first company we're going to talk about today is Extore Gold Mines Limited on the disclosure, we're not shareholders of the company. They are a banner sponsor on our website. And again, uh, if you want to do some homework on the company, um, you can go to their web, uh, their, directly to their website, or you can also click on the banner on our website, and that'll take you to their website where you can find plenty of information to do your research uh, on Xtory. Um, the past coverage, we started coverage of them in our email newsletter, the Alan Berry Report. Uh, we started that on April the 8th, 2010, which was our 28th edition. And uh, we also uh, had uh, started uh, coverage of them on our shows on uh, April the 21st, 2010. Um, if you want to uh, check out those past reports, just look above me uh, at the, on the website and you'll see a report section. In there we have all of our past reports, including that uh, uh, 20, um, 28th edition. And um, also if you want to see the past shows, uh, we have a show section on the website and in there you can find all of our past shows, including the dates, the companies that were talked about, the key topics, and a link to go watch those shows and that's where you'd find that April the 21st 2010 uh, show and uh, their website is extore.com that's e-x-t-o-r-r-e.com uh, we've talked about them on several of our past shows uh, the most recent one was on our April the 7th 2011 show also you can find that in the show section and since then they've had a couple press releases out that we wanted to talk about today so I'm, I've got their website up now and on their website uh, they have a company news section and then they've got news from 2011 
Uh, I'm just going to pull up that April the 19th uh, press release first. And I've got it up here now. The headline uh, from that press release, oh, it's just taking a second to load here. Uh, okay, the headline is New High Grade Gold Silver Discovery at Sarah Morrow. Uh, they went on that they announced a high grade to bonanza grade gold silver results from the first three of 21 diamond drill holes completed to date on the discovery named Zoe at the Sierra Moro, Santa Cruz Province, Argentina. Um, they go on that visual inspection of the core without the benefit of assays suggests that drilling has just entered the mineralize mineralized zone and that mineraliza mineralization continues at depth. Uh, highlights from the drilling, uh, hole MD1204 intersected 4.84 meters of 64.6 grams per ton gold plus 7530 grams per ton silver uh, which works out to a gold equivalent of 190 grams uh, and uh, they go on that the so the zo discovery is si situated on the escondida uh, structure which is 2.5 kilometers east of the last known uh, significant Escondida mineralization or called the Martina Chute. The target is interpreted to be an east-west dilation zone some two kilometers in strike length. Uh, the discovery is essentially blind from surface with the shallowest high grade mineralization appearing at a vertical depth of 80 meters. Uh, there's a quote from Mr. Matthew Williams who's Extore's exploration manager and he stated and I quote, we have made another blind discovery of spectacular mineralization. The surface expression of Zo is an outcrop that assays only 0.34 grams per ton gold and 115 grams per ton silver. It demonstrates the value of persistence and commitment to a soundly based geological model. The dramatic increase in gold and silver grades in diamond drill hole MD1196 a 40 meter step back of the discovery hole MD1191 coupled with the bonanza gold and silver grades encountered in MD1204 a 40 meter step out support our decision to concentrate 50 percent of our drill rigs and team on defining the ZO discovery every effort will be made to ensure that this new discovery will be included in the revised resource scheduled for Q3 this year, end quote. And so then they have a, um, a detail or a table with a, a few drill hole results there, the ones that uh, were mentioned in the quote um, from um, uh, Matt, Matthew M Williams. And then uh, they have some more details about the uh, exploration on the uh, on the dis Zo discovery. Um, this is a really uh, exciting new discovery from the, for the company because of its uh, distance from the uh, Escondida uh, veins where they've already been uh, having quite exceptionally good results as well of high grade silver and gold near surface. And so now to find a new discovery that's 2.5 kilometers away is quite impressive and we're really excited about this new discovery. So then... Um, uh, there's more drill results in their um, May 4th press release from this ZO discovery as well. I've got it up here now, and the headline from that press release dated May the 4th, uh, 2011, is uh, high grade or high gold silver grades continue for for ZO discovery at Sierra Moro. Uh, they go on that they announced additional high grade to bonanza grade gold silver results from the next 10 of 27 diamond drill holes completed to date on the zo discovery at Cerro Moro, santa cruz province argentina um, one of those holes for example had a uh, which is uh, identified as md1213 had an 8.6 meter intersection of 39.9 grams per ton gold and 4056 grams per ton silver um, there was a, a much higher grade uh, sub-interval in there of 1.3 meters of 170, or sorry, 171 grams per ton gold and 14,321 grams per ton silver. So that's what they mean when they talk about bonanza grades. 
Um, then they uh, had in MD, uh, a hole MD1224, that one intersected 3.48 meters of 60.7 grams per ton gold and 1875 grams per ton silver. Um, MD1126 or sorry, 1226 had intersected 1.8 meters of 162 grams per ton gold and 2316 grams per ton silver. Um, the new drilling results define high grade to bonanza gold grades at 350 meter strike length and a vertical depth of 204, up to 240 meters. Two drill rigs are continuing to step out along the two kilometer long target zone. Bruce Roxburgh, who is the X Stories co-chairman stated, the new results are clearly outstanding and confirm the continuity of mineralization at the zone discovery. Our view is that ZO has the potential to both significantly expand the scope of the mine development, extend the life of the project. Additional drilling is required, but ZO is indeed a game changer for the project, and we are encouraged that our geologist advice is that the geological structure is strong and persistent along trend. Significantly, drilling indicates that the, the Zovane Zo Zo system is fully preserved and represents another blind from surface discovery for Sierra Moro. The very subtle surface expression of the discovery highlights the potential of similar discoveries elsewhere within the 200 square kilometer Sierra Moro vein field. We are also we also complement our skilled exploration team, many of whom have been busy with have been with us for many years and know the project and these high grade vein systems well on their highly successful exploration results. End quote. Then they have a bunch of details about the uh, drilling, the ZO discovery, a table with all the various different drill holes, and plenty of information there to uh, to, to check out on this uh, ZO discovery. So that's the key information from the press release. Uh, some of the reasons that we like Xtory is we're very bullish on gold and silver. Um, one of the things that we're always looking for is high-grade discoveries. Finding high-grade discoveries of, uh, of silver and gold that is near surface is tricky. And uh, that's what Xtory has here on their, um, uh, at their uh, uh, Sierra Moro project. And now they're also getting... Uh, uh, a new discovery at Zo that looks quite spectacular as well. Um, they uh, they are well funded company. They have a strong management team. They're very aggressive with their exploration. the The area that they're in uh, benefits from uh, very uh, good weather that's conducive to working pretty much year round there. Uh, the access is really good, and uh, they have a lot going for them on the Cerro Moro discovery in the past and now with this new zo discovery it adds to the scope of the potential and we're very uh very excited about this new discovery and looking forward to uh future news from the company so stay tuned a uh, good place to do your homework is on their website at xstory.com or as i said earlier uh, they are a banner sponsor on our website and you can just click on their banner on our website It'll take you to their website where you can do plenty of uh, research on the, the company and their various uh, results. So now we're going to move into our second company today. And the um, second company we're going to talk about is uh, Osisco Mining Corp. On the disclosure, we're not shareholders of the company. Our past coverage includes they are a featured company in the Allen Berry Reports email newsletter. We started coverage of them on December the 18th, 2008, which was our 21st edition. We've also had them on several of our past shows. We started coverage on the shows on April the 15th, 2010. They're, uh, if you want to find the past reports, just look above me on the website and you'll find uh, a report section. In there we have all of our past reports, including that 21st edition. You can either read it online or print it off in a Word file to uh, read at your leisure. Also, uh, above me on the website, you'll see a show section. In the sh show section, we have all of our past reports, our at past shows, including dates, the companies that were featured, and uh, and a link to go watch the shows, and that's where you can find that April 15th press or show 
plus all of our past times we talked about uh, Osisco. Their website is osisko.com. That's osisko.com. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we've had them on several of our past shows. Uh, the most recent one was on our April the 27th, 2011 show. Uh, since then, they've had one press release that we wanted to talk about on today's show. Um, I've got their website up here at osisko.com. On there, they have a press archive section. In the uh, Then you would look for the April 28th uh, press release. And um, the headline from that one is, Osisko announces revised mine production plan at Canadian Malartic. Gold production forecast at 1.02 ounces over the next 18 months. Uh, Osisko, uh, well, they go on that Osisko was pleased to announce to provide a revised summary of the annual mine production for its planned 100% owned Canadian Malartic project. This new plan is based on the U.S. $1,000 uh, gold reserve estimate of 10.71 million ounces of gold that was recently disclosed. Uh, you can see the March 31st, uh, 2011 press release. Um, they go on that uh, G Mining Services of Montreal are the independent consultants for OSISCO who have authorized the release of the following plan. And the highlights include gold production which started this month will total at 1.02 million ounces over the next 18 months. Recoverable gold has increased by 1.46 million ounces to 9.18 million ounces at 85.8% recovery from the previously disclosed figure of 7.72 million ounces uh, at 86% recovery. And you can see the February 10th, 2010 press release for details about that. The mine life has increased 31% or 3.8 years to 16 years based on a 55,000 ton per day milling rate that will increase to 60,000 tons per day in mid-2012. Uh, average of 625,000 ounces per year gold production during the first full five years from 2012 to 2016. Average of 574,000 ounces per year gold production during 16-year life of mine. Sean Rusin, who's the president and CEO, uh, had a quote uh, in the press release, and he noted, and I, and I, and I quote, We are very pleased to present our shareholders with this updated mine plan that is based on the latest engineered pit and new reserves estimate of 10.7 million ounces of gold. The reserve and resultant mine schedule are based on U.S. $1,000 per ounce gold price, which is 33% less than the current spot price. Startup and commissioning are very are, are going very smoothly at Canadian Malartic, and production has commenced on a 24 hour per day basis with six Doré bars poured to date. Studies are underway to ramp up production to 65,000 tons per day in 2013, which will have the effect of boosting annual production. We are continuing our, our intensive drilling program on, on the Canadian Malartic project property and expect to continue to bring in additional reserves in the coming years, end quote. And so then they have some more details about the, um, uh, the mine, mine life, and uh, you can find that in the press release. That's all the key information from the press release that we wanted to talk about. So in uh, the key reasons that we like OSISCO is we've been following them for a long time. Um, we've been really early in their uh, in their curve of success towards uh, bringing it into a mine. Um, it's really exciting to watch a junior mine a junior exploration company make a major discovery and advance that major discovery into what is now uh, a mine. Um, that is a very impressive milestone that uh, we're quite excited to have followed in our reports to talk about to our uh, our readers and viewers um, and uh, another thing that is the uh, not only are they a new producing gold company they're producing gold when gold is at its uh, all-time highs that's not uh, uh, factored for uh, not, uh, calculated based on um, uh, inflation adjusted but nonetheless the nominal uh, highs 
and um, you know coming in at these prices is quite exciting and not only that they come in with uh, a plus 500,000 ounces of production on an annual basis this company uh, has a lot of really great growth prospects uh, now that they've gone through that discovery development and now producing stage and uh, they're going to be a low cost producer of significant uh, gold and we think that this will propel them to become a much larger company in the future um, so uh, again a great place to do your homework on the company is on their website at osisco.com and I think you'll uh, you find plenty of news on there they've done lots of work and you can see uh, just how things have progressed for the company to now being uh, one of Canada's new gold mining companies uh, with an outstand, out, outstanding outlook for the future. All right, so now our third company we're going to talk about today is Fortuna Silver Mines. On the disclosure, we're not shareholders of the company. Our past coverage uh, includes that they are a, uh, we started coverage of them on March the 31st, 2009 in our Allen Berry Reports email newsletter. That was our 23rd edition. Uh, we also have had them on past shows. We started coverage in the shows on July the 29th, 2010. If you're watching on, on uh, the show on our website at allenberryreports.com, just look above me at the report section. That's where you'll find that 23rd edition. Look for the show section, and that's where you can find that July 29th, 2010 edition. Their website is fortunasilver.com. That's F-O-R-T-U-N-A-S-I-L-V-E-R.com. Uh, as I mentioned, this is another company that we've talked about on several of our past shows. Uh, go to the show section, you'll find them all. Uh, since our most recent coverage on February the 3rd, 2011, they've had three press releases out that we'd like to talk about today. We'll start uh, with their, I've got their website up here now. We'll start with their uh, April 26th uh, press release. In that one, the headline is Fortuna reports silver production of 437,000 ounces of uh, for first quarter 2011. They go on that uh, they are pleased to announce production figures for the first quarter of 2011 from their Keloma mine located in Arequipa, Peru. Uh, Fortuna's production guidance of 2000, for 2011 is 2.4 million ounces of silver. Um, 7,530 ounces of gold, 25.2 million pounds of zinc, 16.6 million pounds of lead, and 70, 760,000 pounds of copper. Um, they go on and give you the highlights. Uh, silver production um, for the first quarter of 2010 was 437,000 ounces. Lead was a little over 5 million pounds. Uh, zinc was... Um, almost 6 million pounds and uh, uh, cash cost per silver ounce net of byproduct credits estimate of negative US uh, 400 or $4.52 so uh, the um, uh, the uh, other metals contribute to bringing that silver cost the cost of producing the silver down to a negative number which is uh, uh, very encouraging and so then they have uh, more details about the recent quarter and you can find that on their uh, on the website the next one we wanted to talk about was their uh, April 14th press release the headline from that one is Fortuna Silver continues to extend high-grade uh, silver ore shoots at K Loma they go on that they pleased to announce additional assay results from the discovery of two high-grade gold silver ore zones in the Badias vein located in the central portion of the Kaloma Mine District. Preliminary results were previously announced in a news release dated December 15, 2010. Uh, one of the highlight holes had a 160-meter intersection averaging 1,225 grams per ton silver, uh, 0.06 grams per ton uh, gold, 0.89% lead, 1.23% zinc, and 0.6% copper uh, over average vein width of uh, 0.86 uh, meters. Um, then they've got more details in there. They go on, there's a quote from uh, Dr. Thomas Vares, who is the Vice President of Exploration, and he commented, and I quote, 
The discovery of high-grade silver ore shoots in the Badias vein is a strong validation of the continued exploration potential in this historic district. The district has been in semi-continuous production since the arrival of the Spaniards in the early 16th century and the potential for new discoveries is still outstanding. We are currently exploring the lateral and depth extensions of the Badias, San Cristobal, Animas and La Plata veins with a Kaloma Brownfields exploration budget totaling in excess of $6.5 million U.S for 2011 end quote so you can find plenty of details about the recent uh, that that uh, drill those various different drill results uh, some very good numbers in there and then on april the 12th they had a press release out and the headline from that one is fortuna silver reports increase in reserves and resources uh, they go on that they announced updated mineral reserve and mineral resource estimates for the Kaloma mine located in southern Peru and the San Jose project located in uh, southern Mexico. Then they give you the details of the proven and probable reserves, the me measured and indicated resources, the inferred resources, the proven and probable reserves, uh, the measured and indicated and inferred resources. There's a quote from um, uh, Thomas Veers, again, Vice President for Exploration for, tu for Fortuna Silver, and he stated, and I quote, Both the Kaloma Mine in Peru and the San Jose Project in Mexico offer excellent potential for additions to our current reserve and resource base, and we're pursuing a number of targets which, if successful, could have potent material impact on the two properties. In 2009 and 2010, We've been successful in replacing reserves consumed through production at Kaloma and believe that with our improving understanding of ore controls in the district, we should be able to continue to add to the resource and reserve base. At San Jose, now that construction is well advanced, we are focusing our exploration efforts on testing the southern extension of the San Jose zone, as well as vein targets in the San Geronimo Tavich area and prominent geochemical anomalies associated with the silica replaced carbonates in the El Rancho area end quote so there's plenty of really good details in the press release about their um, their work at Kiloma at San Jose you can find that in the press release on their website so uh, that's all the key information from their press release we wanted to talk about some of the reasons that we like uh, 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 Fortuna is that they're a silver focused company we're always uh, trying to find silver companies but that's a difficult thing to do uh, there's not a lot of pure sort of silver plays out there especially uh, in mining friendly jurisdictions and uh, Fortuna Silver has that's what they have high quality projects in mining friendly jurisdictions and uh, in Mexico and in uh, South America they have a strong management team that uh, has a lot of experience mining in those regions and uh, they've got plenty of cash they're a producer uh, they generate a lot of news we've talked about them a lot in the past and we expect to be talking about them a lot in future shows and so great place for you to do your homework is on their website at uh, fortunasilver.com and I think you'll find uh, plenty of information there that uh, uh, is quite impressive about this silver focus company so that's a wrap on our in the news show uh, today uh, before closing we'd like to stress that this show and our reports are for information purposes only we aren't making buying or selling recommendations it's important for you to do your own research and speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions we're always trying to grow our audience and any efforts you make to um, uh, let your friends that follow the markets uh, know about our reports our website and our shows would be greatly appreciated we also uh, greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch these shows. We know that uh, everybody is very busy these days. We strive to produce a show that saves you time and brings you helpful, high-quality information. Uh, our next show will be uh, early next week. We'll be doing another of our In the News shows. Uh, best way to keep track of all of our various shows is to uh, be a subscriber. If you're not already a subscriber, there's no charge. Uh, to subscribe to our email list just look above me at the subscribe section fill out the information and we'll keep you up to speed on all of our various work 
We hope you can join us for our future shows. You can find all of our work on our website at allenberryreports.com. We'll see you soon and have a great day.